talk to you about anxiety, like those of you who are dealing with things, walking through situations in this life, you're married, things are going great, then all of a sudden something happens. Person wants a divorce. You thought you would live your life forever with this person and all of a sudden the very person that you thought would be there forever is about to leave and you see the knife, you see the wood, you see the fire, but you're wondering, are you the sacrifice? You've got children that you're raising and everything seemed to be fine when they were younger, but now they're at a place where they're a little bit older and they're, they're doing things that you couldn't even imagine. And you're worried. They've got addictions. They've got things going on and you're wondering, God, what is going on? You see the knife, you see the wood, you see the fire, but where is the sacrifice? Those dreamers in here who are trying to build a dream, Everything seems to be going fine and all of a sudden you hear something. There's a rumbling. Something is happening that is trying to, to distract you. You see the knife, you see the wood, you see the fire. You've got anxiety. You can't sleep. You're tossing and turning all night long, wondering what is going on. God, what is going on in this moment? What is going on? What is happening right now? I've been there. It's a very difficult place when you know that you've got anxiety all over you. So as I look at this text and I see Isaac wondering, is he the sacrifice? I came here to tell you some good news. If you are in this place and you are wondering if you are the sacrifice, I came to tell you that you are not. You are not the sacrifice. God did not bring you this far to leave you. You are not about to die. You are not about to lose everything. You are not the sacrifice. How do I know that? In the very next verse, Abraham answers Isaac. He says, God himself will provide the sacrifice. So here in this moment in the Old Testament, they are under the law, so they need the blood of a lamb for the atonement of sin. Us today, we are under grace. So the blood of Jesus atones for our sins. So Jesus was already the sacrifice. So let me ask you something. Since God himself provided the sacrifice and was the sacrifice, why are you having so much anxiety nailing yourself to a cross that Jesus has already risen from? What do you do in this moment though? Now that you know you're not the sacrifice, what do you do? How do you get past it? How do you get past this anxiety? How do you rest? How do you have peace? How do you, what do you do? And that is in the scripture for me as I was reading. This is what made me think about it. Abraham tells his servants, stay here. And me and Isaac are going to go up and worship. He saw a mountain that God had led him to, so he was going to go up and worship. So they were going to climb. They were going to go up and they were going to climb, and they were going to maintain. They were going to worship. Climb and maintain. The climbing is the prayer, and the worship is maintaining. So what do you do with anxiety? You climb and maintain. It's turbulent. You go higher. You climb. You pray. You maintain. You worship. You pray and you worship. You climb and maintain. You pray and worship. You climb and maintain. You pray and worship. Listen to me. Turn to somebody right now and tell them you are not the sacrifice. I want to tell you something. Go home and get you some rest tonight because understanding that you are not the sacrifice, all you have to do is climb and maintain. All you have to do to get rid of the anxiety is to pray and to worship. What, what prayer, simple prayer, prayer is talking to God, just having a conversation with him. God, I need you. God, I need you to be with me right now. God, I need you to walk me through this thing. God, I need you to be by my side. Please, Father, in the name of Jesus, stay with me. Let your blood be with me, O Lamb of God. Thank you right now. Lord, increase my territory. Let your hand of favor stay with me. Keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. You've got to pray. And that is the climb. And then the maintain is the worship. God, you're wonderful. How I love your name. How excellent are you, O Lamb of God. You have no rival. 
You have no equal. You are the only true and living God. God, thank you for everything you've ever done for me. God, I worship you only you can. You've got to climb and maintain and you've got to read the word. You've got to get into some of those Psalms where you really understand that God is on your side. Psalms 91 says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he will deliver me from the snare of the fowl and from the noiseless pestilence. A thousand shall fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near me. Yes, sir. Only with mine eyes will I behold and see the reward of the wicked because I have made the Lord, which is the most high, my habitation. Therefore, no evil shall befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. For he will give his angels charge over me to keep me in all of my ways. They will bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against the stone. I will tread on the lion, the adder, and the young lion, and the dragon shall I trample under my feet. You've got to get the word inside it. You've got to believe that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You've got to believe it. You've got to believe it. You've got to climb and maintain. You've got to climb and maintain.